I bought a whole lot of cars in my days and I've learned a lot of things. When I walk into a dealership, there are things that you can say and there's things that you definitely don't want to say because it will destroy your chances to make a deal. So I'm going to share with you 10 things you definitely don't want to say when you're walking into a dealership to try to buy a new car. Let's get into it now. Welcome back to the channel everybody, Mark with Exotic Car Play Place. So the first thing you definitely don't want to say to the dealer when you walk into their showroom floor, because it will give them the upper hand financially is... Yeah, you betcha. I'm paying cash guys. You gonna cut me a great deal or what? I've personally made this mistake myself in the past, and nowadays very few people actually pay cash anyhow to the tune of about 16%. Yeah, that's right, 84% of the buyers today either finance or lease their cars. Very few actually pay cash. And dealers have found ways around that. They can actually come out ahead with a finance rate. Even though they'll give you a better price, if you say or if they believe that you are buying through financing, they'll give you a better negotiated price on the car because they'll know they'll make it up on after sales, they'll know they'll make it up on interest rate. And if you say you're buying cash early on in the deal, guaranteed they're gonna stand hard because they know they have nowhere else to grab that dollars from. They can't get it in for interest rates, they can't get it in through financing or lease terms. All they can do it is get an like outright dollar. So at the end of the day, if you tell them you're paying cash, you will pay too much for that car on the front end. You're always better off to have them maybe believe that you're going to finance and then at the very end, when you're ready to sign the paperwork, well, you know, I changed my mind, I'm gonna pay cash, I'll take that price, thank you very much. So the second thing I would never ever tell a dealer when you walk in there is, I really, really need to buy a car today, guys. I really need one today, I need one right away, I got some trips to make, can you help me out with this today? Because even I've been caught in that trap before, there's been times where I got really excited or I needed a car right away, and that exudes that energy, and they know how to pick up on that. These guys are vultures and they'll know how to read that energy. As soon as you say that, you know guaranteed you're gonna pay way too much for that car. That's not what you wanna do. You wanna give that perception of nonchalant. I don't really care. I could take it, I could leave it. Maybe I should walk away and just think about it for a while. Because if you give them the impression you need a car now and you need it today, you will pay too much. You'll pay full price. You might even pay more than full price. That's another trap you don't wanna get sucked into. So the third thing you definitely don't want to say to these guys is, well, I need to make this fit into a budget. That's all I have is $400 a month. Do you think you can make that work for me guys? And even I knew this before when I was buying cars in the past, you never want to give them a budget because it's not about how much you're paying for the car anymore. It's actually about how much they're going to fit into that 350 or $400 a month payment. They can fatten that up so bad that they can push your payments out to 84 months or 72 months, or maybe you only want to pay for a car for three or four years, but they will fatten that up to the point where, yeah, they'll get you your monthly payment, but they'll fatten up and put all that fat in there and that chub and squeeze all that extra interest rate and all those extra add-ons and they'll put it and fatten it up there. You don't see that. All you see is, hey, I've got my $350 a month payment or $400 a month payment, I'm happy. But guess what? You will pay way too much. And by the time that car's ever paid off, your grandkids will have grandkids of their own. So that's another key thing you never want to tell these dealers. So the fourth thing you never want to tell these clowns is... Yes, I'm a proctologist. Yeah, I'm a doctor. You know what? I'm looking for a premium BMW. Make sure you give me a good deal, would you? That's right. They look at somebody who they know is wealthy. They've got a bankroll. They will take them to the bank. As a matter of fact, it's like another story I had. A friend of mine flew to Venezuela. He was going there for business, but he had his fancy leather coat. He had his laptop on his shoulder. He had his bag, all kinds of bags and a camera bag. He literally took 30 steps out of a cab and was mugged right on the side of the road. He had to walk to the hotel in his bare feet. He basically caught a plane headed back home. Why? Because he exudes wealth. And the same thing goes here. You're telling people that you have money. They're gonna extract as much of your hard-earned dollars from your wallet or your pocket as they possibly can. You definitely don't wanna have a piece of that. And guess what? We're on number five. And number five is basically, Wow, this thing is great. Wow, this thing is great. But does it have cup holders? And can I plug in this, my cell phone into it here and play my music in this thing? Yeah, I've been trapped to this too, and I'm sure a lot of us do. When we're buying cars, we get excited about all the little features. We, we, we already know going into the dealership what kind of power we're looking for, what kind of economy, the type of vehicle. That's usually most people these days are well-educated and well-versed because the internet is a beautiful thing. 
But when you start poking around and looking at the little goofy things like cup holders and ashrays and lighters and plugins and ports and other little doodads and features and whatnot, the dealer already knows that you're kind of glossed over. You know that you're getting excited and that tells the wrong picture again. It shows that you're too excited. So excited, in fact, that you're likely going to pay way more than you should for that car. So number six is a good one. Is is really gonna send all kinds of signals to the dealer that you're you're desperate and you don't have a clue and you're gonna wind up paying more than you should. As a matter of fact, you really should train yourself. Stand in front of a mirror at home and try to prevent that. Train yourself from not getting pulled into this. And the next thing you don't wanna say is, Oh, I really love this car. I need this thing. What is it? Because it's that very excitement that will tell a dealer that you're going to get sucked in and take it like this. You don't want that guys. You want to pay what's fair because you know what the MSRP is, but the dealer will hold strong and you will have no negotiating power if you tell them you're so excited or if you show you're excited or your eyes go wide and you're like, wow, I love that car. I need that car. No, you don't. What you do need to do is show zero emotion. So practice that at home zero emotion as well as if you can basically beat at the point or show that you don't need to make the deal today kind of show a little bit of interest to kind of lure them so they give you the time of day but then kind of hold back and be a little bit kind of standoffish well you know it's a nice car but i'm not sure i'm looking at other models i've actually been looking at this car across the street i kind of like that one too to be honest i, I almost prefer that I just came here because this color is kind of neat, but to be honest, I don't know, I'm on the fence, so I'm going to go take a look at another car after this one too. Say things like that, and they'll be more inclined to try to make a deal. So the next thing you don't want to say to these guys is, Hmm, I don't know much about cars. It looks nice. It probably goes pretty fast. Does it get good fuel mileage? So saying that you don't know anything about cars is essentially saying that you're going to go for a ride. They're going to take you for a ride. That's right. If you know nothing going into it, then you have no point of reference and they know that. So even if you don't know much, don't say that. And I tell you a story. I went to a Lamborghini dealership a couple years ago in Scottsdale, Arizona, who actually had no clue what one of the particular Lamborghini models that even existed in the lineup. I baffled him with all of the specs. He had no idea. So there's no way that old guy was gonna take me for a ride. So the next one is one that we've all likely experienced at some point. If you've ever walked across those thresholds, you've probably been asked this question. So never admit to it, and that is. Yeah, you bet, I have a trade, it's over there. It's that little truck, that's my trade in. I'll take whatever you guys think is fair. Because if that's the first thing that you're going to say, yeah, I have a car for trade, what ends up happening is sometimes they pull you into the negotiations, say the negotiations isn't going your way or you're not happy with the way things are going. Often what happens is they'll send a buddy of theirs or the manager, they'll take your car, your keys, and they'll go drive it off while you're negotiating inside. That creates an upper hand for them because what happens is while they're driving your car, if you decide you want to walk away from the deal because they're being shysters, they kind of know they've sort of got you locked in. You're looking back and your car's not outside. So it kind of forces you, forces to keep you into that situation. Not really the optimal time. It's not bad to trade in your car, especially good if you know there's a problem with your car. I understand that. But sometimes it's better to sort of hold off a little bit longer, get further into the negotiations before you even admit that you've got a trade. And so another one is one that I would recommend not saying either, and that is, Whoa, that is so pretty, but... I really don't want to be ripped off, guys. I don't want to be taken to the cleaners just because I like a nice car. You guys won't let that happen, will you? And really the main reason for that, I mean, we all sort of think it. You've heard the terms of honest Johns used autos or honest autos used Johns. There's an assumption that the greasy car salesman or the snake oil salesman, they're all going to take you for a ride. And while there are many, many of them that do out there, don't say it because if you say that, you're implying that they're all thieves, they're all crooks, and they're all gonna take you for a ride. And there is actually a lot of great salespeople out there. A lot of them do just wanna help you. A lot of them are working a nine to five, they wanna make an honest living. The sales guys don't make a whole lot more if they sell a car to you for a thousand dollars more. That profit really goes more to the dealership and the, and the general manager, but the sales guy, he'll make his margin and it won't matter a whole lot whether you get an extra thousand or two off of the price of that car. Don't treat them like they're crooks because there are a lot of great salespeople out there that are just trying to do the right thing. And it's really not ideal to go around insulting people. So here's a great one for you. 
Well, my credit really isn't very good. Um, you know, I've made some bad buys in the past. Are you guys able to help out with that, you think? So openly admitting that you have a poor credit score or a poor credit rating, what you're doing is telling them that you're assuming that you're going to expect a higher interest rate. If you're, uh, if you're going to borrow through the lending institution that is supported by the dealership, they might look to, to bump up that interest rate a little bit. They might add in a little extra warranty at the back end. They might almost even add a little bit extra security or insurance on that interest because they expect you to have a poor credit rating. If you tell them that you think you might have, they might, you might actually genuinely pay more money. They will give you a much more conservative finance rate and you'll pay through the nose. So your best bet is just let the chips fall where they may. Go in there, do your credit application if that's where you're purchasing through the dealer and see where that lands you. You always still want to negotiate the best price. So those are the 10 things you definitely don't want to tell a dealer when you walk into their store. And as well, did you know leasing is also not a great choice? Here, check that video. It's really going to explain the whole routine with that and why you wouldn't want to lease your new vehicle. I never did. And on top of that, I hope to see you guys on the flip side. Remember, life's way too short to drive boring cars. See you next time. Bye-bye.